Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to another installment of Show to Be with Mike G, the show of life, the show of lotion, the show of mustaches, Fugazi's waiting room, and more. Today's guest is the wonderful Darren Malski. Some of you may have known him from Republic National Distribution Company. Some of you might know him as a freelancing marketing genius, but others might now know him from the latest chapter, his latest move to San Antonio or Pioneer Wine and Spirits. It's been San Antonio week again on Show to V. This week, first with Stefan Mendez of the Bavardier Group and the Vice President of the USBG in San Antonio. And now, the wonderfully gentle, creative, insightful, and almost brooding Darren Mielski. Hope you guys enjoy this chat. Now I want to see what else. Now yeah. I really want to. Oh, dude, they got it. There's everything, and it's prime. Like, because you know, it's, oh, oh, if it's not prime, instant. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you know what I really need right now? Some cock straws. I would love some cock straws. Free shipping for tomorrow. Let's get them. <laughs> you want the fluorescent blue or the fluorescent green? I mean, there's. Just... Oh, I think you have to do pink. Yeah. Well, I I think they... pink or black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Those are both good good options. God, I mean, I would have never thought on a. Thursday morning, are we talking about cock straws? You know, is there something better to talk about? Probably not. Morning? Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> so you're, I know you recently moved to San Antonio. The, I think the only time we've been in the same room, although, we, you know, we have probably many of the same friends, Jenner, for right. example, which is a good, you know, good friend of yours from what I understand. But I remember years ago, you brought in, is it Gracie from Hendrix? And the distiller from Hendrix. Leslie Gracie? Leslie Gracie, thank you. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, who's the dude with the mustache? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, I, I think that's Darren. Because, you know, yeah. you, you had this reputation, a good one. And, and again, the industry is so small. And so from those days, I guess that was probably three years ago. Oh, man, that was. It was a while, wasn't it? Was it three or four? Yeah, it, it was something been like four that. four years yeah. ago. So it seems like the journeys went on a lot of different uh twists and turns since then it's it's definitely been uh, an interesting and fun ride uh a lot has a lot has been learned yeah uh in, in the past few years how old are you now i am 40 years old no shit yeah well you don't look it so that's oh, good. hey thanks uh yeah. i have the cane in the car so. okay good well i've been watching house so i understand <laughs> <laughs> is the canes in the car i think there's some vicodin in the drawer over there just in case you're feeling down oh Awesome. <laughs> I mean, I carry it in the car with me, too. Oh, good. Okay. Just making sure you're you fully gotta be, set. Got to be prepared, right? There's alcohol and the vi- basically your side. All done. Sorry, alcohol. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, but, I, you know, it's funny because I didn't realize you worked at Second, which we'll talk about. I didn't realize for Congress. I knew about the Republic stuff. But all this starts back. The reason I, I, I'm, I used to live in Salt Lake City, go to Idaho a lot, go to Wyoming a lot. My dad will go to Montana a lot. And is, is it true you're actually from, is it Billings? Billings, Montana. Did you grow up in Billings? I was born there, um, I don't know, just a few years after I was born, we moved away. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where'd, you, where'd you move to from Billings? From Billings, uh, let's see. We moved to, I believe, a reservation uh, in right around the Minneapolis area. Really? Mm-hmm. So are you, a Philly, are you Native American? Not that I know of. <laughs> um, but that I don't remember at yeah. all. Uh, we we were there a year, I guess, and then we moved to like Indiana and Arizona. All as a kid. These are crazy spots. Yeah. So you're the the job thing, a military kid. No, my father got out of the military, and he was an engineer, mm. and he just followed work. That's a good thing to do. Tell yeah. my dad that he was in the hospitality industry, oddly enough. Yeah, and yeah. It's funny how you can follow work. I mean, even in this industry. Yeah, it's cr- engineering too. I mean, because mm-hmm. it's a. It's interesting demand for that. What, what electrical engineering, chemical engineering? Uh, that I did not. I do not know to this day. 
he did a lot of things uh, uh, with throughout uh, different countries. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, I see. Russia in the old days, the Iron Curtain. Yeah. Uh, South Korea, North so Korea. But I used to know if he could even talk about it then, right? Uh, he never really talked much about his work. Yeah. You know, he was gone. You know, six months at a time. Oh wow! And yeah, that's quite a while. Yeah. Where did you have any brothers or sisters? I have a stepbrother somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, when my father remarried, uh, he remarried this lady from Korea. Okay. And she had a son. And uh, I mean, I only we only were together for probably like three or four years. Oh wow. Okay. And after my father died, um, I was kicked out. Yeah. And uh, lived in uh, went from Rochester to Syracuse, and then I moved to South Texas. That's and crazy. Just, uh, yeah. so you got kicked out. You don't. You seem like mild mannered, very respectful yeah. guy. What's going to get you kicked out? Um. Well, it was the inheritance. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So it causes a lot of. Yeah, fourteen, thirteen, fourteen. You don't re- know any of that's going on. Yeah, yeah. Till later in life, like I think I was in my freshman year in high school, I started getting these letters about like, well, you, you know, you no longer live here. And, really? You know. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. So is is the what's is estranged the right word? Do you still talk to your your mom and stuff? Uh, I still talk to my mother. Uh, she lives in St. Cloud. Okay, where's so. that? Oh, have you watched Fargo? Oh, yeah. That oh, road yeah. that oh, they yeah, constantly yeah. travel on, that is the same road you take from Minneapolis to get there. Is like, it really? Oh, yeah. It's lined oh, with yeah, blood, blood dripping snow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Oh, wow. Well, there's, it's like there's nothing up there. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it seems very, very desolate. Mm. But it, it's, man, there, I, it is funny. There's this movie. Do you ever heard of the movie You're Next? No. Really, really good modern horror movie. And actually, I can't now get into it, but it, it has a common thing. where Because <laughs> I was like, if you had seen it, I want to ruin it because it's a brilliant <clears throat> plot. But it's always about money in it. People always get... Always. It tears everybody. That's why they murder each other. That's what breaks up families. Wars. Yeah, wars. It's it's really kind of troubling that it, it, it comes that way. But it ultimately shifted you into... South Texas, what were you doing? Or how, about how old were you when you ended up there? Uh, I ended up, well, I lived in Austin when I was really young mm. and then moved away. Uh, my father's job took us to uh, New York, upstate New York. Yeah, you said Rochester, right? Well, a little uh, a or little Syracuse? town outside called Honeyway Falls. Honeyway Falls. Uh-huh. Good people? There's ranches <laughs> and like reindeer. And oh, it was, man. It was very... Uh, have you ever watched Twin Peaks? Of course. It was just like Twin Peaks. Your life is a series of <laughs> Lynch and uh, Coen brother movies. I like it. There's a lot of Lynch-esque moments throughout my life. <laughs> um, living there was definitely one of them. Really? Oh, People yeah. strange? It's just kind of a weird pace of life? or Cultish, weird. Oh, like, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What's well, this? I mean, this is interesting. You Tell me you write about this in detail. Mm. all of these things there's like this implicit mystery to it that i'm getting from you and i'm like shit i really wanted to like spend half an hour talking about this cultish reindeer area in new york oh, you know it was crazy yeah <laughs> yeah um and also uh, umbros and uh what, what are the uh, umbros shoes uh they're sperry's or boat shoes were like a huge oh, yeah. thing really is it that's, isn't that's it crazy. too cold to do that mm, you get is used it? to it kind of quick <laughs> when you i mean making the conscious choice to wear umbros all the time <laughs> You, ha- you have to. Yeah, you have to. I, I never could do it. My I father bought me a pair and I... Mm. No, it's just... It's it's succumbing to another level that I, I couldn't do it either. And it was it's different up there too because soccer and hockey are huge. Mm. Whereas down here, like... What? Hockey? Soccer, mm. kind of. <laughs> there's, exactly. like, there's like bartender leagues or something. <laughs> Football was like, eh, you guys want to try out? Yeah. Eh. eh. Really? But soccer, it was like, just, oh my god, that is crazy. And lacrosse too. A lot of like Europeans or something said over there. No, uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, so we're in so, so, South. So you touched on Austin, moved away, and then you came back. We're in South uh, Texas. Ooh, right? a place called Sarita. I lived on the Kennedy Ranch. Okay. Uh, I don't was, know. I'm not familiar with. Kennedy. Oh, you ready for this? Yeah, yeah. Another, another uh, Blow my chapter. Mind. Yeah. Is the House of Prayer. Holy shit. Yeah. What denomination or is it just not in denomination? Uh, it was like a, a, a place for oblate priests and 
Carmelite nuns. So I'm not sure what they're. I actually just learned about Carmelite nuns now. Really? Last uh, my mother house. used to be one. <laughs> really? Yeah. That is insane. Yeah. I mean, well, not insane. I'm not judging anybody for devoting their life to the Lord. I mean, people do that shit. I divorce. I don't think she's so much into it anymore. <laughs> how do you? Do you know how you get out of it? I think you just stop. <laughs> you just. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I've never. It's like really... Forrest Gump when he's running. He's like, I'm done. I'm going yeah, home. Yeah. That's it. I think after you hit a series of, I've heard some interesting stories, um, and after you try to help and try to devote your time, mm -hmm. people are like, well, you kind of upset this person, this priest, so, nah, you're banned from all these churches and things really? like that. Oh, yeah. That's so strange. Mm. So it's like you're in the club, you piss off one of the members, you're out of the club, and you never come back. Uh, yeah. Is it vicious? Is it? Like I, that's what it seemed like. Yeah. I mean, that's... That's what I gathered. Again, like I. What do you What do you do in this house of prayer? Like, what What can you? How do you <laughs> occupy your time? What did I do? Yeah. Uh, I snuck out a lot. Um, I went on. It was a hundred acres, okay. so uh, there was one kid my age that lived there, and we would. Ooh, we would get into a, a little bit of trouble, but you have to. Um, oh yeah, but you a hundred acres, you know, and you could. Uh, that's where I learned to drive. I could just take the truck anytime I wanted to. Yeah. And there, I mean, you had to be careful because there was, so the Bishop of Corpus like uh, imported all these animals to be hunted by like helicopter and things like that. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, surprisingly they were shut down, but all these animals still roamed and uh, well, like d deer, boar, stuff like that. Deer, the wild dogs of like uh, Africa or Australia, the ones with the real big ears. Oh yeah. Like really hyenas big. almost. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, bobcats, elk, uh, uh, nil guy. Which is a type of antelope. Interesting. Uh, a lot, a lot of different animals that you know aren't from native, South Texas. Yeah. yeah, I can see the the <clears throat> the issue thickening. It's like, oh yeah, you imported these animals just to hunt. Yeah, they're not even native. Yeah, it could be destructive to the ecosystem. You know? That and you know somebody's making a pretty profit off of it. True. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I snuck out a lot. I got into a lot of trouble. I remember any time I heard the song uh, "Waiting Room" Fugazi. Fugazi yeah, I knew that uh, I was like, "Oh man, something bad's gonna happen." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, it, it's <laughs> like it's like your theme song, you know? It's like that song in Kill Bill. It's like wee, wee. <laughs> once we, once waiting waiting room starts, like uh oh, <laughs> shit's gonna go down. Yeah, it it definitely felt like that. Um, you know, it was just me sneaking out and getting caught i hung out with this kid who his parents were texas oil uh -huh. um, so he had plenty of money oh yeah he'd pick me up and i mean he would do like donuts on people's lawns and like uh -huh. knock over mailboxes and lo and behold like the next day the cops would come out to the ranch like so we heard that you did this stuff like how i don't have a truck yeah well you're you you need we need to go downtown and have a talk which is downtown like kingsville which right oh kingsville okay it was the nearest place. And it's like, well, I don't have a, I never had a truck. How do I? How did I do this? Right. Well, somebody yeah. said they saw you driving. Like, driving what? But they couldn't, I mean. They could never pin it on you. Well, they couldn't say it was him. Yeah. Using his family's truck, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's so strange. Did you, did you ever, I mean, did you ever get locked away for a little oh, bit? Oh, God, no. Yeah. No. You, you avoided it, which is good. Yeah. Causing good, good, uh misdemeanor level <laughs> for and I, like i was just in the passenger seat yeah but you but you're right innocent i think <laughs> because that, i bet i mean it kind of implies this family probably owns the town a little bit uh know, pay for everything and yeah have the cops in their pocket mm. and all that well their kid who later I, I uh i know he did some bad things later in life but i don't know i know that he got i think he got locked away okay but uh at least there's some kind of you know, point to the story that the dude can't get away with everything. Yeah. that's But that's, I mean, that's really crazy that it's like, well, we got to take you in because the other guys are bought and paid for. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how long does this, this shen these shenanigans last? Like, you got to get out of there at some uh, point. I right? stopped hanging out with him for a, a while after, I think, like, I didn't learn the first or second, maybe the third time. I was like, okay, <laughs> you know what? I can't hang out anymore. But yeah. to sneak out, I had to take a bike and ride two and a half miles to get to the gate have somebody pick me up oh man so you're in good shape uh, i was back then oh definitely <laughs> oh, yeah how does this i mean how does this stuff turn into like hospitality is 
You know, because well, sometimes it's hard to say, like, all right, already this is a very riveting Lynch-esque story with a lot of desolation, a lot of animals, a lot of nature, a lot of fugazi. <laughs> so, but at some point you break away, you're like, I can't do this anymore. I started, I don't know, later uh, in life, I started managing a couple of restaurants. You know, it was just, yeah. I don't know. It, I didn't mind the long hours. I didn't mind the late nights or overnights. Um, I just kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, it was a 24 hour diner and I ended up doing, taking on like three and it was, it was fun for a while, but you know, I was definitely the youngest in the company. Oh and yeah. Is like, it something that's still around? Is it a chain or is it? Gyms. Oh no shit. <laughs> yeah. Or were you still in Texas? Cause is it Texas only or like Oklahoma and stuff? Texas. Too? All right. Okay. Um, it's when Old Man Hasselocker still owned it. Yeah. And, you know, you just came in and worked. Just and do your It thing. was fun. Like, I really enjoyed it. And I had started that because uh, when I was like 20, 21, I had all these odd jobs and I was trying to get myself to a stable area. Right. And uh, I had gotten fired from this one place uh, because <laughs> I, I had said something to one of the managers who didn't quite understand what was going on. Uh-huh. It was in a hotel. Okay. Motel ish. But it was uh some uh I don't know if they were Democrats or Republicans. Right. Somebody right. was having like uh a series of talks. Okay. And uh yeah, they wanted me to help them set up. But the management wanted me to do something else. And I'm like, well, these people clearly take precedence over because they're they've bought the yeah, whole Yeah, they're paying hotel. for this room or whatever, yeah. <clears throat> and the, you know we didn't get along and i was let go and um i went down to gyms and applied and uh they're like well what are you looking for i'm like i don't know something back of the house maybe they're like nope server I'm like mm, <laughs> i don't know about that i'm like i can't carry plates or do things like that they're like it's fine we'll teach you and i kept saying no 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 and they're like no no don't worry about it we got you we they got really you. wanted you to join the gym's team and i i loved it you know all i all i had to do was my job yeah. and make sure everyone was happy. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a diner. It's not a hard thing. Um, but I, I really loved it. You know, the harder you worked, the more money you made. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a nice relationship, <clears throat> right? Work harder, more money. That's yeah. great. Well, it also helped that I was, when I started off, I was surrounded by strip clubs too. So, <laughs> you know, wait until like three thirty, four o'clock in the morning and all the girls would come in oh, yeah. and, you know, they get to, they work off tips. So it was absolutely like, it was great. Yeah. Young young dude, early 20s, mm-hmm. right? And then uh, turned 21, and they're like, well, you know, we want to make you a server trainer. I'm like, why, why would I want that? Yeah. Like, just make me a manager. Uh, I learned that you make less as a manager. Because you got tipped <laughs> out, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, uh, so that was, that was like boot camp. Yeah. Uh, we had to go to classes. They sent us to SAC. We had to take these classes. Um. You know, we had a lot of things that we had to do and then learn. We had to learn every part of, we had to learn everything about the restaurant, mm-hmm. uh, how everything works, if it breaks, how to fix it from the dishwasher and working. Like you have to get your hands dirty. You have to know all of our recipes. You have to know this. And that. So every single thing that sucks. That you get paid less to know everything. Usually that's not the case. Well, yeah. But when you're a server, you know, you are a bartender, you tend to make tips and, sure. you know, if, you believe in what you do, you tend to make more tips. Yeah. And the management does not always make that much money. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the, this kind of period right before you you enter this hospitality, so you're working at a hotel slash motel or motel-esque thing, mm-hmm. were you ever on the path to do the college thing? Did you want to get a degree and all that? So when I was at gyms, I decided to start taking classes. Oh, good. Okay. I was working overnight and then going to school in the morning at SAC. Oh, shit. Okay. Did that for a while. And then uh, I was like, you know what? I really just want to go to school. So I left gyms and started working at Carabas. Carabas? Off Days of Allah, yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, I knew. It's almost like <laughs> I knew. He's like, I bet he went to classes. No, oh, like, Yeah. Well, that's um, a, but that's a great thing. Like somehow, did you see that it would be too stagnant career-wise in hospitality or with gyms, or you just wanted to keep learning? I honestly didn't know where I was going or what I wanted. So I I 
took a year off to try and figure out like what direction do I want to go in. Yeah. I'm, I left management to go to school and then I left school to just kind of enjoy what I didn't enjoy before because now I'm a server yeah, and I have more time. Sure. Um, later on, I moved to Austin um, to what? go to... I, I went back to gyms. Okay. Because I needed a job, and they actually paid me more than what I was making. Oh, that's Jim's great. Jim's in Austin made, paid me a lot more. Market value, I guess. So I'm like, okay, well, I can get everything from SAC. I can get all my transcripts, everything in order, mm-hmm. uh, save some money, find a job. So I'm like, cool, six months and done. And that's exactly what I did. Okay. I went back to Carabas here off of... Uh, is Where is like, that one? Is that the one that was up? Oh, it, it, it closed down. It's like some other Italian place now. It's, uh, mm, what is it? Is uh, the one by 22, airport? Yeah. 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 2222. By yeah. the theater that was over there. Fiskville, right? Like middle Lincoln? Fiskville? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I remember that. Man, those were, that was crazy. That is, so I was going to school um, and I was doing that at night. And then on the weekends, I was pedicabbing. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Um, the true Austin experience, it sounds like. Yeah. So after that, I um, later on, I was working. I was working in a lab and doing school, and I was uh, just doing admin for Carabas on the weekends. Yeah. And take a couple tables, do admin, do payroll, get out. Um, and then one day, manager came up to me. And he's like, "Hey, man, uh, we don't have a bartender. You want to bartend?" I was like, "Oh, there you eh. go." Not really. It's like, cool. Well, here's the book. <laughs> here's the bar. Um, so, well, yeah. <laughs> how was alcohol as a thing for you as a kid? It sounds like probably pretty dry. Uh, no. My father gave himself alcohol poisoning once. Oh, wow. So we had booze in the house, which I remember the first time I broke into that cabinet. Um, and nobody really drank. Yeah. You know, I would fill the bottles up with water. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. What was a what any so it, it was a an atrocious thing for me too. Like I remember there was kamikaze mix. First time I think I drank something I'm like, oh my god, this is the worst fucking oh, thing ever. We had Canadian Club. Oh, that's not bad. We had Bacardi and Cuervo. Oh jeez. Those were the bottles we had. Oh, and Amaretto. That was it. It's enough to get a party started. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't strictly for Bowdoin or anything. No. So it was around. It was for guests. Yeah. But no. you did you have any, what I would say, like proclivity towards wanting to be creative with alcohol? It's not even. I a never, thing now, is it? you know, like growing up, I never thought about it. Yeah. You know, I remember when I just started at gyms and I was like, okay, I'm about to turn 21. I've already drank all the beer. Of course, Mad Dog was a thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, stuff called Crazy Horse. But now I'm 21. Crazy Horse. All right. Oh, that's that's a, an amazing name for 64 anything. 64 ounces of malt. Dennis. It's just. <laughs> uh, yeah, a jug. I could see them with the regret, like just flushing across your face, like oh, yeah. Oh. Those those weren't the days. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was I wanted something different. You know, I was asking friends, like, so what do you guys drink? And really, it was when I was first time I went to Carabas, you know, and started working there more and more. I wanted to know, like, what do you guys drink? We're starting to hang out more. Like, right. I want something. What do you like? What's, what do I do here? Like, yeah, you know, I really haven't drank much besides, you know the things that we drink as kids and uh you know start drinking gin i I really liked gin but i I just felt like you know i can't stay with one thing there's got to be more there's got to be more and i had you know went through a lot of drinks and one night my friend and i sat in a bar the bartender was like just it was dead and he's like Mm. let me just go through this book and make you things let's all try them yeah yeah Uh, that was good or bad or good and bad well, think of never really drinking much, and then you have these drinks. You know, are are they good or are they bad? At that That's time, a good point. Yeah. At that time, they're amazing. You've never tasted this before. Right. There's so much going on. What's this? What's that? Wow. But it still could have been a bad version of a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it could have been. There was uh, I remember a very watered and muddled uh, old fashioned. Mm. That's when I was like, I can't. Oh my God! What is this? This is not good. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> but you know, you don't know any better. But you're like, mm, mm. 
Sometimes you can far. still tell. Like there's still just an yeah. ounce of, of palette that it, that you have as it's starting <laughs> to like emerge. You know? Yeah. But it was so crazy. Like gin was. I loved gin. That's cr- very very ahead of the curve when you're uh-huh. younger. It's not something people as I deal with that their defense mechanisms about gin all the time. Whiskey came later for me. Yeah. Um, tequila's okay. Yeah. yeah. But gin. That was the thing. Mm-hmm. Huh. Was there a particular one at that point or just any gin? All the gin? Uh, London Dries. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's really what we had at the time anyway. Yeah, we didn't yeah there's, have, you're right. There's not. I don't even think we had much sapphire around. Because that's, yeah, because we're talking probably late like <laughs> 90s, right? <laughs> yeah. Not to, well, that's the picture in the corner, but I mean, I'm, I'm 36. You're not that much older, but I remember, you know, because <laughs> why would it be out? No one cared yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's well, no craft stuff. There's nobody importing it. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. the days of... Dry gin and yearbo jeans and, <laughs> and umbro shorts. Umbro shorts. <laughs> oh man, the nineties. The nineties. I like the nineties. I liked them. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have a problem with them until the late nineties. It, it got a little weird because the movies weren't very good and the music wasn't very good. Oh god, when music came out of the nineties. Oh geez, late nineties. You got like Limp Bizkit and Oh god, <laughs> Huba Stank. The rest uh, of just an Didn't it. Sugar Ray come out during that time too? Yeah, but they <laughs> yes, yes, but they did put that stuff out that was like kind of respectable in the early nineties. But you had what is it? OMC, How Bizarre. Yeah, that's the greatest nineties awesome. songs. It's a, it's good. It is <laughs> worst band. Great song. It's like one of those things, you know. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. That's the nineties. Now <laughs> collection form. So Karaba, how long were you doing the Karaba thing? I did that for a long time, a long time. Um, went through school, many, many years of school. Did not finish. I mean, I have a lot of credits. <laughs> have you have you since went back or just? <sighs> no. I'm You're just, so close, uh, I imagine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which is well, I mean, I was. Yeah. <laughs> what well, did the, the credits expire? Uh. In in some of the classes that I took, I uh, medical and bi- uh, biology and oh, things like right, that, right. so the labs especially, so it's like starting off from like, Windows ninety five class that you took. <laughs> Man, <laughs> floppy disks. Uh huh. <laughs> class about floppy disks. <laughs> that one's not gonna transfer one anymore. Yeah, no. I'm like, what is this? I'm like, no, <laughs> all the files are here. I just, we can't. We we have no way of checking that. Uh, sorry, man. <laughs> Did you find that your skills and kind of the way you were thinking about flavors and things, because, you know, just as a brief aside to think about lotion, which you probably mean this, we'll talk about that, but you have to start thinking about, it. I feel like the, the, the narrative starting to come up, come to be. The more I got into it, like, you know, I did the bar at uh, the downstairs bar at four seasons in the Hilton. That was kind of like, okay, let me, I get to play with some things yeah. and learn some things and understand flavors but it wasn't until i was really i took over the bar or as an agm at the tavern oh yeah okay right on six and mm-hmm. yeah and uh things changed there was new ownership and i was like you know i just gone to tales of the cocktail for yeah. the first time years ago and it was like hey you know um i i was getting more into it and uh you know i wanted to offer them something yeah and without having a whole lot of knowledge and they bit they, they they hired like you yeah let's sure. do it I want we you take the bar and I mean you know it's it's a sports bar but yeah but you could this doesn't mean you can't do cool things um we well it was that's when you want to be inventive because you have a bar and it's really cool but you're not selling anything to learn learning how like my biggest goal was like we're a sports bar yeah we sell beer and shots but when the you know, once a month we would have a day where we would outsell beer, a sports bar, outselling beer and, and cocktails. Yeah, cocktails and shots, of course. But uh, I started to piece things together, like what, what do the client, what does the clientele want? Yeah, and how can I make that achievable with, you know, I mean, looking at what I have and what I like to do, mm-hmm. but what do they really want? And at the end of the day, it's what they really want. But of course. I'd sneak a cocktail of mine on the menu and I'd cost it, you know, I'd make sure that it was the cheapest of them. Right. Because people would then order it. Yeah. But it was it was a good run while it lasted. What is the, I would say like, because it's some of the places that I've known you to work at afterwards, really like pushing the boundaries of cocktail mm-hmm. creativity and innovation. What was the first, the first place where the game got upped 
profoundly? Well, uh, so I, I think Billy Hanky definitely opened my eyes to a yeah. lot of things because I took over that bar and we had bought all these bottles that were a dollar in the sale. Mm -hmm. And it was like, well, what the hell do I do with this stuff? And, you know, he actually helped me understand a lot of things. And you would never think of like a three, because we had to get rid of three olives grape. Yeah. Ugh. Or, yeah. And, you know, we actually came up with a great drink thanks to him. I mean, mm. he really helped me. He's got good tastes, you know? And he's not too heavy handed about anything. It's like, he just gets it. Yeah. It's all accessible. It's not too esoteric or weird. Mm, thing. Man, without him, I would have really, like, he helped me understand and learn a lot of things. Are we talking like, moving forward? Or this is moving forward. Yeah. Because it's second, right? After well, after the tavern, like I went over to second. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I started working there, and you know, he helped me learn some things. Uh, there is a there were a lot of nice people along the way that really helped me out. So, and uh, Paula and Jason were they there at that time mm -hmm. too? I think Paula had was just leaving. Oh, okay. I think she was going to New York. New York yeah. Um, Jason was there. Jason is uh, has a lot of knowledge. It's insane. And I remember, you know going in i would work there it started off like once one day a week and i'd be like hey, teach me something please I, yeah. i'm sure you're swamped but i just want to learn one thing today oh that's brilliant and uh he helped me put together this one drink and it was like okay well what are you gonna do next you have these two flavors how do you what which direction do you want to take right it's like oh wow like you you're starting to understand and realize like not really giving you the tools but walking you through it so yeah. you better understand it's it's a it, it's like a scenario it's one of those word problems mm -hmm. you know it's like bullet train a train b <clears throat> how c gonna you know you have to fill in the blanks and kind of infer how flavor should be but the great thing is it's with creative freedom yeah you know and i mean i learned uh, i learned a lot working there um it was just i mean how any, long were you there approximately uh almost two years yeah and then uh I don't know. Was that the jump after that to Republic? Uh huh. Really? That was the jump. Why? I mean, it seems like you there'd be so much left <clears throat> to, to execute and to learn and to taste. You know, I. Uh, that's a really good question. There, there was a lot to learn and to taste, but I had started doing some things on the side, mm. and it started opening up more and more doors, and so you know. Somebody told me about it, and I'm like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" And I applied for it, and you know, is I this to, the what are, craft specialist of the uh, like point? the beverage consultant basically ah, for it. for the company? Yeah, and uh, you know, my interview was to go in and make five drinks, explain those drinks, and I was like, "Oh God, yeah, like, let's let's figure out." And I like went went in and just I can't remember what I made, but. They were cool and they were very versatile. You know, you want to add beer to one of these. You want to add sparkling. You, how do you? How do you want? You, you know, we can make it more citrus for you. Right, know, right. This and that. But it was really cool, and that's when huh, start learning the corporate game. Totally different one. It's oh. Totally different. That's why I was curious because it's like <laughs> oh, wait, you go from some <laughs> sense of structure, but lots of creative freedom it, to well, nine I to had, five. You know, I had a lot of creative freedom there. Yeah. With certain things, I see. But that portfolio is huge and has right. a lot of things that are just buried gems. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, I want to use these guys with the big guys and make everybody happy and see what what we can do. And it took me a while to get the hang of it. Like, it wasn't making cocktails or trainings or things like that because I loved doing that. Yeah. It was the corporate world. It's different. <laughs> it's a totally different thing. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. The did you did you ever picture yourself as a corporate guy? Because to me, you seem like mm. I guess what's the word? Organic. We're both people, so we're organic. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Just kind of organic and well, creative, and doing your own things at your own pace. And, and that's the thing. I was in the corporate world, but I still had that freedom. Ah. But I still tried to work with you know, and, and there was some. It was hard for me to connect on right. some levels, but it was it was it was fun. And about how long? Did you do that thing? Almost three years. Wow. Yeah. And so is that kind of the recent chapter where you're moving to San Antonio? Oh, no. Okay. Oh, There's no. a big jump in between, right? 
there's there's the big one um so uh i i've now learned like the value of money over like happiness yes yeah. and i loved the job i was doing you know training and education and bringing new things to people and explaining like why this is awesome right i mean take it or leave it but this is it's what still, i feel yeah yeah um and i was doing that i left republic to go to another company as they, they offered me a hefty hefty penny Sometimes and, that is, uh, and be it was, careful what you wish for kind of well, thing, right? Yeah, but one of the brands, like I became a supplier, and mm-hmm. one of the brands was like one of my favorite things. Um, Still favorite? And I've drank too much of it. <laughs> I can't. I, I think the the owner is like a beautiful person. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it just it definitely wasn't for me. There was a lot of uh, bad things that happened, and I was just like, I need to get out of a bad situation. Yeah. And I called up uh, an old buddy who had offered me a job previously. He's like, how do you feel about moving to San Antonio? And in where I was at that moment, I was covering a quarter of the country. And I'm like, yeah. that is the one place that I would love to move to. What was appealing to, I mean, I love San Antonio, but to you, what was appealing to, to head over there? I've been working there for, what, three years or yeah. so? And it's like, well, I, I like it. Yeah. Um, it's cheaper. Just yeah. Cool. It has culture. It's mm-hmm. alive. You know, it's something that when I first moved to Austin, I felt it had. Yeah. It was different. It was definitely different. Sure. Um, and San Antonio has that. It is. And it's still, it's not at a, so Austin is just ahead culturally, probably because we're not as broken apart. Like it's, it's more clustered, you know, but we're about to hit version 2.0. And that's when things really start to like, the pain points, the growing pain start to I show. I mean, growing pain. Ugh. Coming up Mopac, oh, I did. they shut that highway down for, what, months yeah. to make it from three lane to two lanes, which is awesome. That That's really progressive. <laughs> and then to open up a toll road. Like, really? Yeah, You're I doing know. nothing to help the city out. No, absolutely not. Yeah, so. yeah it's strange. But that's, that's a good thing about San Antonio right now is that it's not, it's not, 2-0 yet even though it's been around a long time yeah it just doesn't feel like culturally it's 2-0 it's finally like has this vibrant it's, food movement it's oh, amazing cocktail movement food movement the cocktail movement is absolutely amazing in san antonio um it's it's overlooked many times and i i don't know if anybody else feels this way but i appreciate that that it's overlooked because yeah. what happens when the spotlight's on it then right like my fear is austin too yeah yeah it's a great that's a good point I, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how San Antonio will fall. I've, I've interviewed plenty of people from San Antonio, and it's changed profoundly just in a short amount of time. Oh. And it will continue to, but at least it has the space. Yeah. You know, Austin doesn't really have the space to get bigger. <laughs> you just got to build up. Yeah, we just got to go up. It's like New York <laughs> City, you know. It's like, mm-hmm. I got no more land. But this whole time, you know, you, you have these jobs. You're bartending. You're working in a distribution. You're working for a supplier. Now, again, with Pioneer and San Antonio. Distributor, yeah. Which is great. You guys have a great collection stuff which we'll talk about in a second but it sounds like this concept because you you know you, when you came into the house i'm like he has this interesting smell like this very uh-huh. natural i'm like i don't know that's not a cologne it's it's not it's not uh, alcoholic enough you know <laughs> not, not thin enough it's something really warm and earthy and then lo and behold you have a, what i'd consider a little vial of lotion that you shared with me mm-hmm. when did this kind of passion for bringing because it's like cocktails that you can't drink if you kind of think about it, uh, it is all edible, but oh it, no, kidding! It tastes like soap. I wouldn't. <laughs> we, we've me and some buddies tried. There's it before, plenty so other like, stuff uh, I think we could probably yeah. drink. Yeah, <laughs> um, you know, working behind the bar, I smoke, and yeah. uh, you know, I just got I tried oils and things like that, but it was too strong, mm. and so I'm like, okay, well, somebody turned me on to a place called Garden of the Ancients. What is that? It's out in Manor, and it's oh, wait. Is this the herb place? Uh huh. Yeah, I've heard about this place. Yeah, you pull up to the house in front, and you're like, "Oh my god, I am, I am not supposed to be here." <laughs> but you drive past the house on the same driveway, and you're uh-huh. like, "Oh man, this is something bad." I've seen movies that start off like this, <laughs> and because there's nothing around, there's yeah. just a couple of houses and that are like boarded up or just look like there might be some bones. Hanging. Right, Leatherface uh, will come yeah. out with a chainsaw at any point. Yeah. <laughs> Science saying free hugs. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you go in and you're like, oh my God, there's all these, I mean, it's acres. Yeah. And they have a greenhouse and plants for sale. And you go, you go in and it's almost going through like a wine cellar, the way everything's stacked. Wow. And everything's just ground. 
like fresh and yeah. ground. They they do their own essential oils, uh, not hydrosol, but like pure forms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's uh, beautiful. So it's one of since, those d- inspiring places. Mm-hmm. So since then, you know, I, I started playing around with some things, and you know, just not coming back to your customers, smelling like smoke. Yeah, smelling it's something that masks or, or works with that, right? And that everyone can smell. That's interesting. Um, water basin. <laughs> I do it just like the way I would make a syrup. What the, this particular smell that I'm smelling? What are some of the highlights? One of the highlight oils or smells that you wanted to uh, uh, highlight? <laughs> well, there's lavender. There's okay. sandalwood. Sandalwood. And there's a amber. And oh, those wow. are the three three things in there. How do you get a perspective on how you want things to smell? Do you have like a preference? Darker, <laughs> lighter? Um, I like the tone that it is um it's it's darker it's heavier yeah. um kind of it's brooding nog champa-esque oh okay, <laughs> okay. yeah yeah um and i just i love those smells i love it all together and so it starts as kind of a, really this answer to a problem that you're like man i just don't want to smell like smoke yeah it's not good for the customers and then this where where do you suggest ultimately using is a hand lotion you use on your face you can use you, it's water based. It doesn't stain, yeah. even though it's dark. Mm-hmm. You can put it on your clothes. You can put it in your hair. Oh no, kidding! Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Put it on everything. Wow. Um, I have made one though that was a little too viscous, and mm-hmm. I didn't uh, add enough water to it. And uh, I was wearing a white shirt, and I wiped down. <laughs> I had no idea. Oh no! That I had just stained. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> that was awesome. Does this turn into a bigger thing for you? It sounds. How long proper have you been doing it? Just even. I've been on the doing side it or? on the side for a while. I've played around uh, and done pomades, yeah. uh, done mustache wax. I, I, um, I had a feeling. I had coffee scrubs. Uh, there's. I mean, it's it's really limitless. Yeah. But I have yet to uh, bite the bullet and get a tax ID for it. Luckily, or labeling or finding bottles. But is it something you really want to bring to market? I think it'd be fun. It's scary, but it's fun. Yeah, and this would be my product. Yeah, you, you know, get to that control I it. get to take to people. But soaps are something that I've wanted to play with next. Really, um, playing around with lye and the chemical reactions and watch them fight club a little bit too much. Do you remember that? Fight club. <laughs> Do you remember that whole thing? Oh yeah, yeah. When he burns his own hand. That's it's, right. Which is, yeah, that's. Uh, Does that happen? I don't know. I, don't wait, know wait, I haven't. I haven't tried it yet. Okay. I need to find um, some fat and some lye. <laughs> well, we're in Texas. A lot of obese cities. I think it'd be fun to be, be really. Did we get ranked like number two? Yeah, in we're top five. <laughs> we got yes. I think we probably have, have the most people. We we Let's definitely have forward. our goals. Yeah, <laughs> let get well, our priorities in the right. Place. Yeah, definitely. Have you thought about a name, a brand name? Uh, there's a few floating out there, yeah. but uh, nothing nothing is stuck yet. That's interesting. So. It's just fun. I always like that that ideation phase, you know, where you think, what kind of bottle do I want? Well, the bottle and the, the packaging is like number number one. Totally. So you have to find something that fits in a pocket, yeah. in a purse, something. Something mobile, basically. Um, but yeah, I I don't know, and that's I've been toying around with the idea, and it's been a hobby. Yeah. But I have yet to really go forward with it do you see it as the life after the booze industry finally being an entrepreneur and put peddling your own product you know i'll probably do both at the same time at moonlight uh you know out there selling booze doing god's work yeah um, <laughs> and and then starting to do lotion too which man a totally different market <laughs> yeah because seems like it'd be easier right uh well you have to make sure that you definitely have uh great products to show yeah. and uh but that's where you get into those those are the small that's the small growing then you get into bigger growing pains like yeah well now you have to have your own place that makes this right you can need, i make enough is it gonna be consistent um the lotion shouldn't be a problem at all yeah. but then it's like okay well um soaps and uh, that i haven't even touched yet yeah and making those that's it's really exciting though yeah. it's a good it's I think you've got good access to a lot of creative minds, good products and things. Here well, soon. you never think about, about it when you go into a hotel like, oh, let me check out this soap. <laughs> yeah. Right? And, right. you know, some of the coolest I had was in Portland at the Ace Hotel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Little tiny black bar. It's a, it looked like 
something chiseled off the side of a building. Right. That's an awesome soap. It's incredible. It's it's interesting, but I think that you know, not to give alcohol too much credit because you should never do that, but it, it's the thing that kind of activates mm-hmm. those pleasure centers and those ways to think about flavors, which really are smell. Mm-hmm. Smell is such a big part of that. So I don't know. It's interesting, man. I think that's a really cool pl- place to take things. You know? Yeah. And also another reason you were in town, you know, going back to the Pioneer piece, you guys had basically a spirit showcase last week, right? Mm-hmm. Correct. How did that go? Pretty responsive. A lot of good. I think it went really well. Yeah. Uh, it was it was big. There's a lot of people That's in there. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Cause you, it wasn't a big, was it, it wasn't Brazos Hall, was it? You guys said? No, it was in the Hyatt. Okay. Uh, one of their uh, um, their conference uh, conference room, but it was, it was huge. The ballroom. Or yeah, it was yeah. like the grand ballroom. Um, it was really big. It was, I think it was successful. Yeah. That's amazing. What are some of the, I'm familiar with some of the stuff you guys have in your portfolio right now. What are a few of the, the your favorite marks or skews that you uh, guys are carrying? Uh, the Wolf Burger line, the uh, it's like the Amari, but it's the French version, so it's a mare. Oh, okay. Um, the uh, Smooth Amblers, Smooth Ambler, just <clears> the whiskeys, yeah, yeah, the rums. I mean, we have great rums, uh, per se is an awesome rum. Yeah, amazing stuff. Um, our gins. What gins are you guys carrying? Uh, gin Marais. Okay. Spanish gin. Oh, gin. The yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then uh, Bobby's gin, which is another one. That's, what is that one? Oh, it's distilled with uh, lemongrass, cinnamon, and lime. Interesting. Oh, it's so good. It's really good. Yeah. Um, and there's a new mezcal too. You guys were doing La Nina. La Nina. Okay. <clears throat> La Nina mezcal, the uh, tres papalote. Oh wow. So um, I mean, that's not an easy. It's from Mich- Michoacan. That particular one. That one's from Guerrero. From Guerrero. Oh, uh, better. La Nina is something that's new. Uh, I know they have it over at uh, La Condesa. Oh, cool. Uh, they I mean, because pop- they have a beautiful selection. Because you know that everybody comes to market with an Espadine because it's cheaper. Or well, more. but that going from <clears throat> going with Guerrero for one, which is a totally different terroir, and then getting Papalome or Papalote from mm-hmm. bro, that, that is a really beautiful combination in that area. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Never idle. And it's a little bit harder to get. Yeah. Cool. And espadines, you know, you put espadines up next to each other, no two are going to taste the same. Yeah. Uh, and I find that really interesting, whether good or bad, depending sure. upon your palate. But they're Clay, all. copper. Like yeah. Gallo. And they're all so different. Uh, yeah. It's interesting. So you've been touring Texas, and this is, you're in Austin again from San Antonio. Yeah. I'll how, be how busy here. are you touring around lately? Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, I do some wine and uh, all spirits in San Antonio and, uh, I'm doing spirits here. Yeah. Um, so it gets, it gets a little, a little Is busy. Is it wearing you down at 40? What's that? Is it wearing you down at 40? Uh, <laughs> that is not a shot either. No, I actually, I, I don't feel like it. Yeah. I, I, I try to keep in shape, bitch, you know? <laughs> Um, I've definitely have to watch the amount that I drink nowadays, but yeah. it's different. The older you get, it uh, your body a lot differently. Yeah. It's old man syndrome, high blood pressure and all that <laughs> crap. Yeah. <laughs> that, that tends to happen. But the lotion will help. I imagine it, sniffing that kind of just <laughs> inducing some, some relaxation. Oh you know? yeah. Just put it on. And just you say it was a that. means to cope with smell, but I think it's like a way to just drop your blood pressure. It, that's what it is. <laughs> So where are you headed next in? You're in Austin for, I guess, a couple of days still? Uh, part of today, and then I'm heading back yeah. later on today, and then I'll be back next Wednesday. Back and forth. Yeah. What are you, uh, any events coming up then? I know you guys had that massive spirit showcase last week. Um, we're trying to, do, well, we're going to do one in September uh, with the new South African uh, vermouth that's coming in. Wow. It, yeah, it, it's a comparatif. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty awesome. What kind of base do they use in Chine and Blanc? Okay. Yeah, okay. it's yeah. That's incredible. Um so that's one. Um we might have uh, one with the Papalote. Oh wow. As well. Uh in the beginning of October, so September, beginning of October. I'll let you know. Yeah, please let me know. Um when these things are closer to the dates. Yeah. Um it's just solidifying everything. Right yeah, now. I understand. It's a lot. I mean, I know you have other marketing endeavors as well, which we're going to chat about. But I mean, you're keeping yourself busy. Yeah. And one thing I want to talk about real quick, because you mentioned this, this is the 
this ginger, mm -hmm. which give me a gingember. Little, yeah, gingember. So Wolfberger is a uh, French uh, bitter, so yeah. an Amer. Uh, this one in particular is it's super ginger on the nose. Mm -hmm. And then when you drink it, it's like, oh, that's vanilla and a hint of ginger. Really? It changes. So it's punchier on the mm -hmm. nose than it is in the palate. Something you can use as a modifier or a base. It's 18%. Um, but in France, it's something where you would uh, ask for a bitter beer. Mm. And so you would add this to a beer. Um, this is one of them. Uh, there's three in the wine. Jesus, man, that's good. <laughs> it's funny because you're right. Like You get some ginger. Mm -hmm. I get more punch of citrus and stuff. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, that's, like, god damn. What do you, how do you drink it typically? I mean, it was slightly chilled here because I guess the room is yeah. heavily AC'd. Beautiful temperature, great viscosity, a lot of openness, not too bitter, not too dark. What's, what, what do you like to do with it? Well, myself, uh, I like to drink it straight. Yeah. Uh, we tried it with a uh, West Coast IPA yesterday. Mm -hmm. Just needed a little splash of citrus yeah. and it was awesome. Uh, we added it to just a splash to a batch of ginger beer. Yeah. And that, it was just like... punches it through, right? It does. Uh, adds a little, just a slight more depth to it. Um, but, I mean, you can use it in place of any other Amari. Yeah. It's really nice and light, though. It's yeah. honestly very crisp and nuanced. Mm -hmm. Lovely. And you say they make a couple others, too? They have the Amer Fleur, and uh, uh, their, their main line is uh, Super Orange. I'm like, oh, wow, this is really nice and orange, and then drops off to just earth. Really? Yeah, super quinine. Really, wow. really heavy quinine. This one has quinine, but you barely pick yeah, up on that bitterness. Tinge of it at the back. Um, that one, l'orange, it, you it's like walking up a cliff, like, oh, yay, and yeah. then stepping off because of how much earth it's is so there. assertively earth. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What's well, good, man? I, I'm really Thank excited. You. you guys have some interesting products. I can't wait to try the La Nina. That mezcal, the papalote, just a fan of that and stuff from Guerrero. Oh, man, I should have brought those in. Oh, no. It's, <laughs> there, there's never an absence of booze. Ah, I don't think true. anyway, right? Uh, there's not. That's the problem <laughs> when you get older, more access. I know. You know? It, it's, it is really, really strange. You're younger, like, man, oh, well, someday I wish I could try that mezcal. And then it's like, now you got bottles in your car, like cases, and you know? Oh, yeah. I just cleaned out my... I had a, a large space of just booze bottles. Yeah, for my move over the past years, it's cr it's great and it's a cr it's just crippling at the same time. You can't finish all that shit. No, you <laughs> have to. Even if you have a collection, it's like you you need to share it. Yeah, or I mean, don't. But it's kind of the whole What's point the point? behind what if we behind pass drinking? Right. Well, what? Yeah. But tomorrow, what if we pass? Exactly. What good is the bottle of? 40 year old scotch I've got downstairs, which is not the case. But if it's sealed, what's the point if I never got to enjoy it? Yeah. I'd like to enjoy it. It's still around. And sharing it with people that you want to share it with. Yeah. Like that's, that's the most important thing. That's, I don't know, that's I think what brings is. us all together. I think so too. <laughs> the sense of community. Mm -hmm. Well, so I only have one other question for you. Sure. And this is, God, I, you know, I hope it's not stereotypical because uh. <laughs> you're at, you know, you're at 40, you're traveling around a bit. Do you want, to have a family do you want to do that oh, wow. stuff do you want to get married uh, you know i'm 40 i don't know if i, I i'm not saying that's like the, any kind of boundary or anything is the key or having a family i mean i feel like i have a family now with all the people that i talk to on a daily basis like, yeah because some of them are very close and i don't know I, I i feel like i have a sense of family now yeah but no I, need to go no. above and beyond and actually create a little punk ass kid I think I mean, <laughs> if that happens, I'd be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> but I'm Maybe. 40. I don't know if that'll happen, <laughs> which I'm not. I'm, it's, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, not worried about it. I'm not either. You're going to do all right. <laughs> I think you're going to do good. Darren, it's been a pleasure chatting, man. My pleasure. Absolutely mine. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I love it. And I, I, at some point when you're back in town, we're going to dive more into these Lynch-esque <laughs> scenes of which your life is... Uh, the fabric of your life here. No problem. That, okay. it'll, it, there, there's always very interesting times and stories that go with everything. So. Just if you talk about Chris, let me know beforehand so mm -hmm. I can figure out what the hell's wrong with you. I'll try to teach my... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Darren. Thank you. Well, there we have it. What do you guys think? Darren is a great guy and it's lucky for you out there in San Antonio that he is moved there and is repping Pioneer Wine and Spirits. This lotion, I swear to you, is amazing. It's both masculine and 
feminine. It's sultry. It's evocative. Really good work, Darren, and I can't wait to see what the bottle looks like, what the label looks like. I think it's going to be a smashing success. It's great to know that you're part of this industry, and I hope we get to chat some more in the future. Learn more about these Lynch-esque scenarios of your upbringing. So thanks, everybody, for listening to Show to V. No matter which episode of Season 2, Narcos, you're on at the moment, or how many times you're watching it and there's a lot of nudity and the people around you wonder what the hell you're watching, please keep dancing.